Well, welcome to Paper Crafts Room's Introduction to Paper Making module on water. Why do we need water? Well, we need to disperse the fibres. We need to disperse and dissolve chemicals used in the mill. We need to transport fibres all through the pipework of the, uh, of the, of the mill. And uh, finally, we need water to squirt out the fibres onto the moving wire to give us our sheet of paper. From there on in, it's all about removing water. But in this module, we're just going to talk about water itself. And in this unit, we're going to answer these five questions. What are the sources of water that are used in paper making? And how is this raw water contaminated? What problems can it cause in the mill? And how do we treat the water to remove the contamination? What's a water loop? And what about the effluent? Well, here we go. Sources of water. Three sources of water. There's surface water. Surface water is what you can see when you look around, whatever is on the surface of the earth. There's ground water, pretty self-explanatory. That's what's underneath the ground. And you can't see it, but you can dig for it or drill for it. And then finally, there's also towns water. And some mills really do use very expensive towns water, but they use it very efficiently. Okay, so surface water, we said it's stuff that you can see. So where do we see surface water? Rivers, lakes, streams, reservoirs. Groundwater. How do we get groundwater out, out of the ground? Well, we use boreholes, we use wells, or we use springs. Now, in terms of purity or contamination, these three sources of water are very different. Surface water is the most contaminated. Fish swim in it. They die, other animals die, bits of vegetation drop in, that dies. So, you know, old prams and uh, such like. So, the most common, most contaminated source of water. More pure than that is groundwater, because most of this solid material has been removed when the water permeates through the permeable rocks, and then we uh, suck it back up. And then finally, of course, towns water or portable water. There, it's been purified well enough for us all to drink. So what, are, what is this contamination? Well, as you can see, we've listed here just seven types of contamination. Colour. Rotting vegetation and, and dead animals can impart colour to the uh, water. If we don't remove that, it can impart a colour to the sheet and affect the shade. Order. When things rot, it's not unusual for them to produce some foul smelling odours. If you don't remove this, it can carry through into the mill, onto the machine, into the sheet. And if that's going to be wrapping food, then it can get into the food. Solids content. Suspended solids, particularly after stormy weather. Solids can interfere with fibre-fibre bonding. It can also provide lots of... Uh, wear and tear on pipes and pumps and screens. Bacteria, wherever you've got rotting uh, vegetation and the like, you want to get bacterial growth. When the bacteria comes into the mill, it's got all that wonderful fibre to feed on. You're going to get stickies and all the problems that stickies cause. pH is one of the things that not everyone does control, but it can have effects on the, uh, on the process, and we'll do that in more detail another time. And of course, hardness. As you move from the north of England down to the south, then you go from soft waters to hard waters, and hard waters bring along scale as just one of their problems. And finally, dissolved gases. There's a variety of gases that can be dissolved in water, and they can pr uh, produce anything from simple um, corroding of our plant to uh, problems with pumps, cavitation, for example. Okay, so having got this contaminated water, what are the principles that we use to remove the contamination? Well, typically, as you can see there, it's sedimentation, filtration, and then biological treatment. Biological treatment could be uh, things like bleaches, biologically active chemicals, 
or treatment with something like ultraviolet light, for example. Why is there a trend to closing up paper mill systems with regard to the water loops? Well, look at all those pound signs there. What happens? We pay money to extract water from a river. We pay money to build a plant to clean it up. We have everyday running costs to run that plant and then we use it. Having used the water, we've then got another capital expenditure cost to build a plant to treat the effluent. We then have the everyday running costs of running that plant. And finally we pay to put the water back into the river in a far cleaner state than what it was when we took it out. So that's one reason for cleaning up the effluent and reusing the water. So now, what is a water loop? Well, typically, here we have a paper machine. The water drains through the wire, the back water or the white water, and we'll collect a good portion of that and we'll use it to re-dilute the stock coming onto the machine. We don't use all of it, more parts of that water we can go through a clarification process remove some of that fiber that came through the uh, the wire and collect it put the wire put the fiber back in the system and reuse the water perhaps in the stock prep area or maybe to dissolve or disperse some chemicals and the third loop is the new loop effluent treatment used to go down to the river now people are saying whoa we've just cleaned it up why don't we take it all back there and put it back through the effluent treatment system? Great way of saving money. So, we've brought water in, we've used it. What do we do with the effluent? Well, first of all, we need to separate it. You separate it out into solids and into the liquids. The solid phase is a sludge. We tend to remove as much water as we can things like screw presses, twin wire presses. And then very often a farmer will come along, will pay him to take it away and they'll spread it on the land and that provides a bit of, a bit of mulch for their land. The liquid phase, there's a variety of clarification processes we may go through. We may have some final polishing of the effluent and then we'll do something to try and get some oxygen back into the water before we discharge it back into the sewer or the uh, river. So that's it, that's a short module. I hope you've enjoyed this taster session on water and I look forward to seeing you in one of my formal courses. Goodbye. <laughs>